Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. Today's tutorial is going to be about the for loop statement. I'm going to go ahead and open up my website here, www.javacjava.com. And we'll click on the Begin button. That'll take us to the Tutorials page. We'll scroll down here to the For Statement. Click on that. Okay, I'm going to kind of go over a few things that I went over with the If Statement here, just to reiterate statements. A statement in Java is a complete, execute, a complete unit of execution terminated with a semicolon. A statement can be as simple as a unit of execution like int a equals 100, semicolon, or system.out.println a equals plus the value of the variable a, semicolon. Statements inside of a method are executed in a top-down order. Now, what if you want to execute a similar statement over and over and over and over again? Well, Java provides a set of control flow statements to perform such tasks as these without having to write hundreds of lines of code. This tutorial will introduce you to the basic for statement. I will cover the enhanced for statement in a future tutorial you will learn how to use the for loop to make a conversion chart from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Let's talk about the for statement structure. Um, I've got it down here in bold, basically an example of what it'll look like. And let's go ahead and go over everything here. The for statement consists of three expressions. The expressions are contained inside the set of parentheses located directly after the Java keyword for. You can see down here, here's our Java keyword for opening parenthesis, closing parenthesis. The three expressions are separated by semicolons. You can see semicolon here, semicolon here. Notice there's no semicolon at the end of increment there. The first expression is called the initialization expression and is only executed once when the loop begins. That's this one right here. The second expression is called the termination expression and it is only executed at the beginning of each loop. If the termination expression evaluates to false, program execution exits the for loop. The last expression is called the increment expression, and it is invoked after each iteration of the loop. Okay, so as long as the as long as the termination value equals true, statements are executed as long as the termination expression is equal to true, and that'll keep going and going and going and going. Once this, becomes, this expression becomes false, it'll go ahead and break out of here and continue on with um, any program execution, any following statements. So let's go ahead and scroll down here a little bit, and we're going to copy and paste this first section here. Do a control C, or you can right click on it and select copy. We'll minimize the website, come down to start, search, type in CMD to pull up the command prompt. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start and run, type in CMD. And that'll open up our command prompt. Let's type in cd space backslash. cd is short for change directory and backslash tells us to change to the root. We're going to do make directory java. I already have java, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Do cd java. Should change to the java folder. We're going to do a make directory. We're going to call this the for statement folder here. And let's go ahead and change directories to that folder. We're going to type in uh, notepad for statement.java. For statement.java is going to be our source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Notice that it always ends in a .java extension and it is case sensitive. Okay, we'll hit control V or we can right click and select paste either way. Um, so what we've got is we've got our for statement class declaration and the class declarations code block. We've got our main, in, main method, our entry point for this class. And here's the closing bracket down there. Okay, We're going to do a print line of let's begin the for loop. That's really, really simple. And then here's the, um, here's the initial for loop here, right? I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, just a uh, second thought, I'll keep that up here. In a second, I'm going to move my browser out of the, out of the window there. Okay, so we talked about this, this first expression is what's called the initialization. And most of the time, almost all the time, this will just be a simple integer, 
declaration here, right? And integer i is very common. Um, you could pick really any letter you want, or you can call it a name, as you'll see in, in some of the other uh, experiments we're going to run on this in a little bit. Um, so basically, we declare our int i, and we set its initial value to equal to 0, right? The next expression is going to be the termination expression. So as long as i is less than 5, this will return true. Once i becomes 5, and it won't get any larger than 5 because it'll actually exit out of there, then it'll go ahead and terminate out of this and continue running down here, okay? And this is the last portion of the for loop structure there. And that is the increment expression, okay? So the way this works is we step into this. And if you remember, I was telling you the first expression is called the initialization expression, and it is only executed once when the loop first begins. So it isn't going to do this every single time. Otherwise, we'd be declaring it over and over and over again. We get nowhere, right? So this first one here will only execute once upon entry, okay? Um, now, this particular expression right here is executed at the beginning of each loop. This particular expression is executed at the end of each loop, okay? So think of this as the beginning of the loop, and this is the end of the loop right here in the end of this code block here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is basically going, let's go ahead and save this. And we're just gonna look at this right down to the first, the first for loop is complete. So let's go ahead and compile this through our screen. Java C, call the Java C compiler with the source code file. Compiled fine, let's call Java and invoke the for statement class. And we're just going down to this right here, right? So we begin the for loop, right? i is equal to zero, and we're doing nothing more than just executing this line over and over and over again. i equals plus i, right? i starts out at zero, one, two, three, four, right? Once this executes at the end, four it executes and i becomes five. i is no longer less than five. That causes this to terminate and move down to the, the loop is complete. So that's that's pretty basic here, okay? Now, over here on the, the next little section here, and what I'm gonna do is drag this in, and then we're gonna go side by side here, okay? So we've got, let's begin the second for loop, okay? And just to reiterate that the, um, the termination expression runs at the beginning of each loop, what we're going to do is we're going to set our, our integer i equal to 4, and we're going to set the termination clause, which is i is less than 4. If, if i is less than 4, if that's true, it'll keep running. If not, it'll go ahead and break out, and then i++. Plus plus. So as you can see, by setting i equal to 4 right off the bat, termination clause is i is less than 4. You see this, this line never even executes. All right, we just drop out of here, go to the second, for loop is complete, okay? So hopefully that makes good sense. Now let's, let's uh, go ahead and show you the same, pretty much the same thing, only instead of an increment operator, we're gonna use the, de the uh, decrement operator here. Um, so we got the let's begin the third loop. We set our integer value to five. We set our termination clause that i is greater than or equal to zero, right? So as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, and that evaluates to true, this will continue to keep running. And then i minus minus keeps subtracting this out. So you can see now we've subtracted i equals five, four, three, two, one, zero, and the third for loop is complete, okay? All right, let's go ahead and pull that over, move this over here, and pop back I'm going to bring the website back over here. Okay, the next one here is where we're going to convert um, miles per hour to kilometers per hour. Okay, get that off the screen there. Cut and paste that code right into there. We'll go ahead and save this. Okay, so basically what we've got is we've got an integer of miles per hour. Now, because we didn't use an assignment variable and make this an assignment declaration, it, it'll automatically default to zero. 
Same thing here with double, right? Double will automatically default to 0.0, .0 lowercase d or upper d, indicating that's a double value, okay? So we don't have to initialize those, but we can. Now, um, system.out, print line, these are basically just gonna be our, our headers for our little chart we're gonna make here. And you can see now here, I didn't declare int miles per hour equals 25, right? I declared it outside of the for loop there, and this is a perfectly valid uh, declaration for that too as well. So our first one, initialization expression, right? We've set it, we're just set at 25, that'll run once. Now this is our termination expression. Termination expression, as long as this returns true, this will keep on looping, right? And this is our increment expression. Miles per hour, we'll keep on adding one on every, every um, iteration through this, okay? Uh, so I just Googled how many uh, kilometers are in one mile, and basically there's 1.609344 uh, kilometers in a mile. So our formula is pretty simple. Kilometers per hour equals miles per hour times, you know, how many kilometers are an hour. Okay, and then we're just going to do a, um, a printout of miles per hour. And we're going to go from 25 miles an hour. Our little chart is going to be from 25 miles an hour to 50 miles per hour. And it'll show us the conversion rate on that. So let's go ahead and compile this. Uh, let's clear our screen out over here. Let's compile our Java source code file. Let's, uh, Java, of course, you know, calls the JVM or the Java runtime, and then you pass it the class that you want to invoke. And we'll go ahead and hit enter on that. And you can see it went ahead and made our conversion. We got our miles per hour, kilometers an hour per hour. Um, going right over here. So that was ni nice, tidy, and quick. You can imagine if we didn't have a for loop, we would have to sit there and write this out, system out, print line, you know. Um, well, we basically have to do miles per hour, right? Do the formula calculation, change it, do this, right? Do this again, change its value, do this again. Uh, 25 times, you know, there would be a ton of code, you know, going down here, and that would take forever and just be ridiculous. You can see this for statement has really saved us a lot of effort. You got one, two, three, four lines of code there. So, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. All right, let's go ahead and pop back to the website. And we're going to go into the next one here. Um, what you want to do is look for the uh, this one here, which is all three expressions are optional, right? And we've got this kind of empty for statement down here, OK? We're going to go ahead and do a control C to copy that. Control V to paste this up here, file save. Um, basically, it's going to print out a line. Let's create an infinite loop. You want to press Control C on your keyboard to own it to escape from an infinite loop once you start it, right? And this is just going to do nothing more than keep doing looping forever and ever and ever, Control C to escape. So by leaving the, um, you know, the three expressions blank here, this is basically tells it to just keep on going because this will always return true, nothing's incremented, it just keeps on going. So in Java, if you want to create a nice infinite loop using a for statement, that's, how, that's the syntax you can do to do it. Uh, C, and then we'll invoke this guy. Okay, it's just keeping running and running and running and running forever. I'll control C on the keyboard, and it just, you can see it's just boom, 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 and would have gone on forever had and I, if I hadn't killed it there. All right, let's pop back to the website here. Let's go down to our next little exercise here. Um, all three uh, expressions are optional, but let's set only the termination expression here, okay? So we're going to go ahead and come up here, paste this into Notepad, save it. What we've got here, right, is we're setting the integer i equals zero outside of the, um, let's get this over the other side here. i clean this up, sorry for the pause on that. Um, outside of the initialization um, expression, okay? We've got our termination expression here, i equals five, right? i is less than five, sorry. 
and then we've got our increment expression left completely blank. So we're basically just kind of cheating a little bit here. We're initializing it outside of the for loop, right? And instead of here, right? And we're incrementing it inside of the for loop instead of here, right? So let's go ahead and save this. This is just going to, to loop basically five times and then it's going to break out. Okay, so it did exactly what we're expected. Printed zero, one, two, three, four. Once I in here became five, it, this evaluated a false and it broke out. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and move this back over here. Pull back up my website here. Okay, and this time we're going to set the third expression here and kind of create a, a whole nother infinite loop. So let's go ahead and save this. So what we've got here is we're initializing the, we're declaring and initializing the variable i outside of the for loop. So we've got nothing here. We've got no termination clause, so this is gonna go forever and we're gonna be incrementing it up here in this. And this is just gonna simply plus, say, a little message control C to escape, I equals plus the value of I, and this is gonna run up really fast here. So let's go ahead and clear our screen. Um, compile it, let's invoke it. And you can see it's just cruising right along here. Numbers are becoming pretty large pretty fast. So I'm gonna hit control C and bada boom, bada bing. Okay, did exactly what we expected it to do. All right. Now I'm gonna pull up the website here for our final little exercise on the for loops here, okay. Okay, so in this one here, um, of course, all three expressions are still optional, but let's set only the increment expression. Um, and we're going to introduce you to the break Java keyword. Okay, what the break does is um, it, wherever you place it in the for loop, it will go ahead and break out of the for loop and program execution will continue at the end of the for code block here. So basically, once this breaks out of here, we're going to go ahead and continue the execution here. So you can see we've got our um, integer i, and we're setting that equal to zero, declaring it and assigning it outside of the for loop. We've got nothing that's gonna terminate this for loop. We're still gonna do exactly what we did on the previous exercise, print this, but we threw in an if clause here. So if i is greater than equal to five, go ahead and call the break statement. And that break statement will go ahead and clear us right out of the for, for loops code block and we'll end up executing this little print line here, okay? So let's go ahead and save this, clear the screen. And it did exactly what we expected there. It um, started off at zero, one, two, three, four, five, because we've got the greater than equal to there. And then it went ahead and broke right out of that infinite loop. And so we broke out of the for loop. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. And basically, just to leave you with some final thoughts here, the for statement makes repetitive tasks very simple to perform. Uh, understanding the three expression statements, control, how they control the flow of the iterations of a for statement really is a valuable piece of knowledge. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.